Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Debbie from the Inspiration Station. Today I'd like to share with you a stack of layouts that I've completed over the last couple of months. Several of these you can find process videos for on my channel here at YouTube. Many of them were done for our YouTube hop, Creating with Sketches with Allison Davis Sketches. We had 10 months that we did. There were 10 sketches to the bundle, so we did one every month. Some of those we've already shown in a previous layout share, so not all 10 of them are in here, but the last few months worth are. Others I did off camera, like this one. These were just made for fun. You know, sometimes you don't want to have to uh, perform, <laughs> do anything specific on camera, just play around with your papers, and that was the case with this. These are just a couple of fun pictures I had of my grandson when I was watching him one day. He's quite a character and he just, he makes me laugh, he makes me smile. So I used a bunch of stuff from my stash. I used some Vicki Booten papers. I used an old Becky Higgins, I believe, Project Life card. It may even be Heidi Swap, but I think it's Be Becky Higgins. There are some L Studio pieces on here. I have some 49 and Market film strips. I honestly don't remember where this chipboard camera came from. It was just in the stash. So this was just fun playing around with some stuff. Nothing spectacular, but it's cute. I like it. It's full high energy. This is the same little guy. This one was done as a sketch. I believe it was Scrapbooks and Cards Today. Her sketches, uh, Allison Davis's class that was Sketches for 2024. Um, that was where this one came from. I had some pictures of him baking cookies for the first time last Chris, uh, yeah, last Christmas. And I used a very old collection of papers from Sizzix. It was a six by 12 pad, had a lot of these pinks and turquoise. I wasn't sure how I was ever gonna use it for Christmas pages because that's not really my color scheme, but it worked out really well because it had these little gingerbread houses and candy and everything. And so I thought that was perfect. I did fussy cut this from a um, four by six card, a cut apart card. And I used a, a heart punch that I had, an old EK Success heart punch and some tags. And it's just really cute. I did do a lot of stitching on here. You can see I stitched quite a few, the colors matching the, the papers. Same little guy, you're gonna see him a lot. I spend a lot of time with him. I take care of him one day a week. And he, as I said, he's a character. He's got these great facial expressions and he does a lot of crazy stuff. So you will see him quite a bit in here. This page was done as part of a, uh, what is the, it called? It was a cut, a, simple cuts or something. There's a woman on YouTube who used to do, she would take collections and she would cut them into a, a set series of, cuts and then she would put them all together to make four or six pages. I will link her down below. I can't remember exactly her name. Actually, if I'm going to stop the camera for a second and look it up and find it for you because it'll drive me crazy not knowing. Here we go. I found it. It is Simple Cut Creations and she does, she had a series, I, I don't know if it was four or five, cutting guides. So basically she took all of the same cuts. I'm just going to flip through this a little bit to show you. Um, she showed you how to cut these pieces and you can apply them to any collection that you have. So I had a lot of this uh, Echo Park Favorite Summer, I think it's called. And so I used that collection and I followed this cutting guide and made four pages. I think this is the only one that I've put photos on so far, but as we go through the, the pile, there may be more, we'll see. So again, Simple Cut Creations, I will try to link her below. Uh, this one, as I said, it used Echo Park. I used, this is an old Thickers, puffy letters, phrases type thing. This is from Vicki Booten. Just a lot of fun, bright energy. This was on his birthday. He had the uh, blow up bounce house type thing. So the colors worked perfect. This is very similar to the one that I did previously with the Alice of Davis sketch because it's got the the same triangle type patterns, but this is actually a scrap lift of Hip Kit Club designer Daniela Yanka, I think is how it's pronounced. She used, it was a repetitive shapes mini class. So um, I did use the 
pretty much the same idea. Her layout was just a little bit different. Because these papers were so soft, uh, the, the colors to them, I didn't want anything too bright, so I did take the photo and reduce the saturation. It's not quite black and white, but I reduced it enough so that it blended nicely with the, the papers. And the papers here are from, oh gosh, Rosie Studio. Rosie Studio, and then I'm not sure where these puffy stickers came from. They may be Hip, hip, cl hip Kit Club, or they may be Pink Fresh. I'm not positive. This one was inspired by Victoria Calvin, Victoria Marie Designs. She had done a grid page and used the large um, 4x4 photo in one spot, and I really like the way that looked. I am a sucker for grid pages. I absolutely love them. I like the clean lines, the organized layout, but by putting all the embellishments outside of the boxes, it breaks it up. It doesn't look quite so uh, blocky. So I had seen the one that she did, and it kind of struck me and said, yes, you need to do this. There is another grid page at the end that I just did recently uh, where you'll see a similar technique. These papers were from Kaisercraft, and then these embellishments are from Paper House. Yeah, Paper House. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Paper House. I'm sorry, I forgot a lot of these companies. It's been so long since my store closed that sometimes the names of them escape me, but uh, Paper House Productions, that's the name of the company. It comes to me eventually. This one I do have a process video for. It's uh, under Mosaic Pages. I used the Mosaic Moments grid system. I used their template, put all these photos together. It is a lot easier than it looks. When you look at this, you think it's very complicated. Um, it really isn't. And you can go back and watch that video. I don't remember what month it was in. It was a couple of months ago, but probably the summer of 2024. So you can just go back and take a look at that. This is one of the pages that I did for the Creating with Sketches YouTube hop. This is, uh, again, Kaiser Craft Papers. Obviously, this is uh, Say Yes to the Dress. This was my daughter shopping for uh, bridal gowns and when she finally found the one that she wanted. So using a sketch, again, Allison Davis, and that's there is a video for this on my YouTube channel. This one was done off camera. This is, it was a, a um, challenge somewhere along the line to do a monochromatic page. So I pulled out, again, Kaisercraft. I, this is just really stash diving. I have so much paper and so many products still left from my days as a scrapbook store owner and they're beautiful and I don't want to let them go so I really need to start using them more and I've been trying to make an effort to do that. This one has a process video. It's another one from the Creating with Sketches YouTube hop and it is using some Cartabella paper and I believe this may have, no, it's textured so it is Cartabella. I was going to say it was Echo Park. They're kind of sister companies. I used some Sizzix and Tim Holtz dies here. I used a memory box die for this. Did some stitching. This video, if you watch it, you will see that I started it, got about three quarters of the way through and ended up ripping the whole thing apart and redoing it. So that's kind of interesting if you wanna go take a look at that. This one was done off camera. This is, huh, my cheeky little raccoon that comes to visit. We actually have several of them here. We live in the woods and at the bottom of our very long driveway, we have a dumpster for my husband's business. So occasionally the raccoons find their way into the dumpster and I have to save them. <laughs> it was kind of funny. We actually had the, the uh, waste company came to empty the dumpster and I knew one was in there. So I stopped the guy with the truck and I said, hey, there's a raccoon in there. I don't want him to get dumped into your truck. He goes, oh, we get them all the time. <laughs> Great. Um, so what we ended up doing, um, he picked the dumpster up, tipped it on its side because it wasn't very full, and he just kept shaking it until the, the poor little guy finally climbed out and, and ran off. But um, a couple of days later, I looked out my bedroom window, and I have bird feeders outside the bedroom window, and I saw this guy just hanging out like yeah, I don't care what you think. I'm going to drink the hummingbird water. 
He had no problem with me standing there taking pictures and looking at him. He really didn't care. So we could just call him a honey badger, I guess, because isn't it the honey badgers that don't care? So anyway, this is uh, photo play paper for the most part. There is some dyes on here from Graphic 45 and possibly Sizzix. I don't remember where these long ones are. The embellishments came from Simple Stories from I think it's Lakeside Collection, one of their nature collections that I really liked. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty. I like the, the colors that came with it and I just, I guess we just have to live with the raccoons. This is one I did off camera as well. This is using Hip Kit Club. Uh, you may have seen on one of my videos where I did a haul for National Scrapbook Day. I bought several um, kits from Hip Kit Club from their sale for National Scrapbook Weekend. I don't subscribe, but I do love their products. I'm just not a big subscription person. I like to pick and choose what I get. So um, I did get a lot of the, the papers and things from them. This is a cut file. I believe it's from Pear Tree, Cre Pear Tree Creations, Pear Tree Designs, Pear Tree Cut Files. Anyway, uh, the sticker is from Simple Stories. Uh, these are dies, I believe, that I had. Yes, I die cut these. Uh, some of these came from the Hip Kit embellishment pack, but these I can see are textured papers, so I die cut those. Oh, and just as an aside, I had some memorabilia from this particular event, and I didn't really want to put it on the front of the page because, you know, I, <laughs> the aesthetic of it, I wanted it to be a pretty page, but I don't want to lose that ephemera either. So I just took some adhesive and some uh, washi tape and taped it onto the back. I made a little hinge here so you can still see the information. So it's still in the scrapbook. It's just not cluttering up the page. This one has a process video. It's another one from the Sketches, Creating with Sketches YouTube Hop. And I used, it's very monochromatic. I used some Echo Park stickers. These dies all came from Elizabeth Craft. I tried my hand at some mixed media using a stamp from Hip Kit Club. And I added some stickles on here. I just think it's cute. Uh, I loved the way the red popped in his little car there and his little snowsuit and everything matched so well. So that was just a fun page. Okay, total departure. Now we're getting some really bright primary colors. This is another one of my grandsons. This was his fifth birthday and he had a Lego themed birthday party. He absolutely loves Legos. And his big gift from his parents was actually a trip to Legoland in New York. So um, his whole theme, obviously Lego. I had some paper from Reminisce, very old paper and a sticker sheet that were Lego style. They don't call them Legos, but I think they called them Builder or something like that. And this, I believe, is another Allison Davis sketch. It's not from the bundle that we did the YouTube hop on. It is actually from an older set. It may have been a class using six by six papers. I'm not sure. I have so many of Allison's sketchbooks that I honestly can't keep track of them all. But I recognize the sideways slant as being something I had done before, so I know it's from one of her collections, and I believe it was a 6x6 six six class. I also um, used multiple layers on this number 5 to raise it up to give it that thicker-like appearance. And the die-cut stars, those I believe, those stars came from close to my heart. This one does have a process video. This is one that I used the Pink Fresh Studio stamps and stencils and dies to, it was a complete collection that they sent with one of their workshops. And I did that on camera. I showed how to use it. If you wanna go back and take a look, it's a little bit longer video because I did go through the whole process of stenciling and uh, then cutting it out. But I really love these colors. This is again, uh, Echo Park some of their stickers. A couple of these pieces, like this is Pink Fresh, this is Pink Fresh, but for the most part it was all Echo Park um, besides the embellishments that I, I made using the Pink Fresh collection. This is a page that I did in a class for Pink Fresh Studio. This class was taught, it was an online class taught by Paige Evans, and she provided this cut file that you can see in white. 
this is um, Lovely Blooms collection. And it's a lot of the ephemera from that collection, some of the, the uh, canvas stickers, the alphas, the puffy uh, word phrases. And I had this page sitting around for probably a year since the program, since the uh, class that I did, and didn't really know what I was gonna use it for because there wasn't a lot of space left for photos. But when my daughter sent me this photo of her daughter, uh, it was just so cute and I thought you know what that's perfect we'll just throw that on there and it fit I had to trim it down a little bit to get it to fit in the cluster um, but I really like the way that it came out same little girl a little bit <laughs> more interesting photo um, this is a page that was done in a scrapbooking cards today online class it was with Vicki Booten I had the page started I had created the base of it and then um, really didn't know what I was going to use it for. The colors are not really my style. It's a little, you know, the mixed media is a little bit out of my my comfort zone. But uh, when I had these pictures of her and they were just so funny and had the bright colors, I thought, you know what, this works. Um, the stamps, uh, L Studio, I believe. I think that's what I ended up using. And then this, uh, that's a piece of ephemera from one of Vicki Booten's collections. This is the Discover and Create collection, I believe. I think that's what we used. This one I do have a process video for. I did it fairly recently. This is using all Pink Fresh Studio products. It was their Simply the Best line, which I absolutely love because it has the more boyish colors, which we don't see a lot from them. And I put that together. It will be on my YouTube channel. You can go back and look. Uh, the whole story about, you know, him meeting his baby sister. So you can go take a look at that if you'd like. This is a page that was taught by Victoria Calvin at the recent Simple Stories creative retreat. I absolutely loved it. Her her style is so great and she is an amazing instructor. She is so funny. We really enjoyed her class. Uh, there were four of us that went out to the retreat in Utah and there were a lot of projects done. In fact, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a few more pages that I did there that just don't have photos yet. Um, some of them are fall themed that I need to actually take the photos for. And then there's a couple of su more summer pages from Victoria that I just haven't located any photos for yet. But a lot of fun, all obviously Simple Stories products because that was the retreat. Treat. Um, I think the only change that I made to this was I added the alpha stickers, um, but for the most part, this follows what Victoria had in her layout, pretty much exact. Now we have some two-page layouts. Let me see if I can get them spread out here and still in frame. I can go over a little bit. Move that out of the way. Okay, are they all in frame? Yep, yeah, close enough. So this is another one that is a process video on YouTube. This is from the Creating with Sketches bundle YouTube hop. And it is uh, from a vacation that we took to the Dominican. We actually took a cruise and this was Dominican Republic the day that we went there. And I talk about the whole story in the video if you'd like to go back and take a look. The papers are a mixture of Vicki Booten Where To Next and a pad, I think it was a Michaels, maybe Craftsmith or Recollections pad. I think it was Recollections um, for some of the paper. The, these, uh, what do you call them? The chipboard pieces are from 49 and Market. Sorry, my brain is just not working very well today. Uh, but yeah, I had fun with this one. I really liked it. I like the bright colors. I think they fit very well with the theme. So you can go back and take a look at that video if you'd like. This one is also from the video series, the YouTube Hop. This is using all um, Echo Park products and Pink Fresh Studio Alpha. I did the video, uh, I wanna say it was maybe August or September of 2024, so you can go back and take a look at that. Just a lot of fun, beautiful colors, I really love the way that this line worked um, with the photos for the baby girl. This is one of my most recent videos. You will see that. It is for the last um, 
the last video for our YouTube hop. And again, a two page sketch from Allison Davis from her Creating with Sketches bundle using uh, this, these, um, sorry, words are hard today. Uh, Echo Park again. We've got Tim Holtz on here with the wood slice uh, embellish, um, embossing folder and die. I did the title as a print and cut on my Cricut. And I had to make some adapt adaptations to the sketch because my photos were a different size. And I talk all about that in the video. And this is one, again, from the Simple Stories Creative Retreat. This class was taught by Jody Sanford. And am I in frame? I'm a little high on that one. Pull it down. So this one was fun. Jody had used the Simple Stories page templates. They have several, I don't know, I want to say maybe eight or ten different plastic templates that you can use. And she used this one that is a four by four and two by twos and put it multiple times across the page, which I really like the look of. You'll see in another, I think I have two more pages that we use that same template. I just haven't put the photos on. Her page, in her, uh, the one that she did, her sample, she has four children and she did each panel for one of her children. And I thought, well, that's perfect because I have four grandchildren. And so I did one for each. And uh, I like the way that it came out. I did change all the photos to black and white because obviously they're different times, different places. The colors in them were just all over the place. So by changing them to the classic black and white, I think they go very nicely together. So these are the other pages that I did in the class. Am I missing one? I'm missing something. I'm missing my most recent page. I will have to stop the, the video at some point and go back and find that. So this is another page from Jody Sanford that she used that same template with the four by four and four two by twos. Obviously we just left that one off, gives it a little bit different look. I went back and added some stitching on the acorn. She had given us a pattern for this, a paper piecing pattern. Um, I added a little stitching at the top, so that was a little bit different. This one, I am just waiting for some uh, apple picking photos to put on here, and then that will be finished up. Another one, using the same template, but flipping it. So we've got the four by four at the top here, at the bottom here, and uh, the photos will go all, all in here. And I'm planning on using this for some Thanksgiving photos. And this is another one of Victoria Calvin's classes. Using the summer line, summer snapshots, I believe it's called, simple stories. Just bright, fun. We're using the, the uh, frames. I left these open so that I can slide the photos in uh, when I figure out what I'm using it for. But I just, I love the clusters that were put together and I the layout of the page. Just a lot of fun. And this was the last one from Victoria's class using the uh, watermelon design paper and the watermelon frame. This one, oh yeah, I left the side open. I'm like, where did I stick that down? So the side is open on that one and then the bottom here so I can add the photos. So I'm gonna shut the camera off for a minute because I have one more layout that, or possibly two. I have two more, they're upstairs. I need to go grab those and I will be right back. So I just wanted to backtrack for just a minute. I was showing you these pages that we did at the Simple Stories Retreat. And this is the template that we used. It's design number 12. And you can see here that we used it here. Then we flipped it upside down, did it this way. And then on this page, we turned it. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use the templates. Um, it's a lot of fun to see how you can manipulate them. Here I used it in the same direction on all of the pages. but you know, you think it's so simple. They're just squares. I can put them together myself. But really, when you start to play with them, it makes a big difference. First of all, you're lining them up perfectly. You don't have to worry about spacing them equally. And in this case, because you've got the space between the two by twos, they're not exactly four inches across. So this doesn't line up, you know, it's not going to line up with one side or the other. So having it pre-designed for you and line up so it's centered really works out nicely. So I just wanted to go back and show you that because I did use another template on an upcoming page. This one was done off camera and this one, I struggled with this one. These, 
uh, I don't know. I love this paper line. It's Echo Park, um, Our Baby Girl, I believe it's called. And I really, uh, I actually can show you where I started with it. I started like matting the photos and using the rainbow paper and I was playing around with it and I just, I couldn't make it work. So then I put it away, went to bed, came back the next day, reprinted this photo as a five by seven and I liked it so much better. The presence on the page, it just filled the page better. So then I was able to go in and add some embellishments and um, I used a little bit of vellum, which I don't usually do. So that was kind of fun. I wanted to soften up the edges because everything is so linear. I did add a little bit of stitching here. And um, I don't know, it's, I like it now. I didn't like it before. I was really struggling, but uh, I will end up using these, these photos. I left them matted on the paper because I will probably go back and use them somehow. But um, yeah, <laughs> this I like this much better. Anyway, this is the last one and I just did it uh, the other day. And this, again, used a Simple Stories page template. This is Design 7. It's the two by two squares. It really helps line everything up. I was actually inspired by Paige Evans. These are all Paige Evans products on the page. She does a lot of grid layouts and um, different sizes. She's done them for several of the Scrapbook and Cards Today classes. And I really like the look of them. Again, I said I love grid layouts but this makes it much easier to get everything lined up. And in this case, this was really cool. When we were in Utah for the retreat, we visited American Crafts outlet store and they had a special, you got a gift with purchase. And it was these little two by two square pads of Paige Evans products, of Paige Evans paper. It was the Splendid line. And it was just a little gift with purchase. There were tiny little pads. One pad was all patterns, one pad was sentiments um and i just thought well this is perfect because they're two by two and i can just stick them down and i literally laid the template down put my adhesive in between the spots and then just laid those little two by two squares down and the page was pretty much done i did choose to cut it down and mat it with some of this purple color and then put it onto white paper because i think it gave it a, a more framed finished look. I went back with the um, embellishments, the ephemera, I think it was the floral ephemera from the collection. They were huge. So I really struggled to try and find things that would fit, but I did have some stickers from, I think it was the same collection. I don't know. I have a, I have a bin, <laughs> a, a storage bin that's all Paige Evans, and I try to keep the lines separate, but sometimes once they've been pulled out, sticker pat paper has been pulled out of a pad or the embellishments have been dumped out. Sometimes they get dumped into one envelope and so I'm not really positive, but most most of her lines all blend very well. So that was the, the most recent one that I did and I really love it. And I'm sure I will be using these templates again. They're a lot of fun. So anyway, if you stuck with me this long, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment to let me know what type of page that I've shown you is your favorite. Do you like grid layouts? Do you like the mosaic pages? Do you like the sketch ones? Um, there's a lot of different styles here. I'm always interested to hear what, what you like, so please leave me a comment on that. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. I truly appreciate that, and I thank you for spending the day with me. You have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!